Hey Homestead Prepper, I've got a problem here with my uh, dehydrator. This uh, this has been an excellent dehydrator, still in pretty good shape, you know. It's done a lot of fruits, vegetables, jerky, and I was just trying to do some beef jerky in it and it, uh, it quit. So what I'm going to do is uh, take it apart and we're going to see what uh, what is wrong with it. So just be using some basic hand tools. I guess it helps if we use the uh, correct bit in there. I'll take this thing out. Got these screws right here. I mean, it's not like you know, it's not like you're trying to you know take apart a rocket ship or something like that. So let's get this off. I got an idea of probably what it is. It's either there's like a little heat overload, just as like on a heat strip in an air conditioner, or it uh, you know is the heating element has burned out. So the fan doesn't come on. So I'm kind of suspecting it's that little. It's like a it's like a failsafe to keep things from burning up. This lid. Well, let's get this thing popped off of here. And put our screws. Usually, I like to have a little container to put them in. I guess it'll be fine right there. Pop that off. Oh, see, there's more screws back here. They got to come off. So let's let's take that off. These are a little bit longer. This Phillips head screws. The beauty is if I break it taking it apart, it's already broken, it's not working. That's the attitude I've always had working on stuff. Get that out of there. That's the fan. Need to loosen up the wiring. Take that out. Come on, baby. Well, tie wraps are cheap. We can always buy another one. Or put another one on there. Here, that should give us a little slack where we can pull that thing out now. There we go. That's the um, the thermistor. You you'll see those on like your wife's hair dryer, things like that. Let's let's do a meter that beeps. Maybe that might help out some of you. I don't know. Let's try this meter. I mean, a Harbor Freight meter will work, even one of those ones that has a needle on it. We can see this a little better. Let's zoom in. Okay, you see the element. It's like a like toaster wires. Just resistance. And like I said, this is the thing in question here. And we're going to put this on to ohms. And this one's going to have an audible beep. And it's going to show us on the display. So, all right. We don't have an audible beep there. See, we're going to have continuity from here to here. But we don't have it across it. So, that has gone bad. So, I'm going to have to figure out what kind of thermistor that is. Well, you know what? I think we're going to get lucky. 
and it's going to say what it is on it. Well, let me uh, let me take that out of there and take a closer look. Okay, the the wiring is not really that complicated on this thing, but uh, if you're not really used to doing this type of stuff, what what I like to do is just take a picture, and you know that that kind of shows me what is going on here. And I mean, you can get a pencil and paper. It's just the camera is so convenient. Okay, just for fun, I'm gonna bypass the um, I'm bypassing the thermistor. And I'm just going to hook this up direct and see if the, the fan works. Now, if uh, if you don't know what you're doing, I don't recommend you do this because you could, uh, well, you could start a fire or you could injure yourself. You could get shocked, you know, all kinds of stuff. So, please don't do that. So, we're just going to see if the fan will come on. Let's, uh, let's get the plug. Make sure your fingers are clear. And we're going to plug this thing in. And there we go. So, our fan is good. Okay, what I've got is I've just pried this thing open with my pocket knife. And I've pulled that thing out right there. And see that they're riveted on. And you would have to get some more rivets. And it's going to be easier, I think, just to pry this open. Like I said, I don't recommend you uh, you do what I'm doing. You get a, a professional electronics guy to do it. But this is how I'm going to do it. And I'm just going to recrimp that thing using the old crimp. Of course, this side's going to be more stubborn. Okay, I was able to open those things up and get this pulled out. So hopefully when I get the new one I can just, just shove it in there and then crimp it back down. Or I can solder it. Okay, I just typed in the, the fuse and this is what came up right here. So I'm probably going to get a pack of five because uh, if I get one it'll break or it won't be good. If I get two I'll probably break both of them. If I have five then I'll have a couple extra. So all right, well, let me get them ordered, and I guess through the magic of YouTube, I'll be back in just a second and show you how to put it in. Okay, let me see if I can do a little better job of explaining how this works. Okay, this is the bad one. Okay, I've got my meter set up here to ohms. You hear the beeping. That's continuity. We put this across here, and like that, and we don't get any beeping. That's because this is burned out on the inside. It's not making... Uh, connection so that's bad I've got about five new ones there let's see this so that one's good and the old one lasted about 12 years so I guess I got about 60 years worth right there which I guess is going to outlast me so okay um, and also what we want to do is we want to look at I'm curious to see how many watts this is and what we need to also do is see if there's continuity through this uh, heating coil right here so I've still got it set to ohms and we start on one end of the coil we go to the other end and we have continuity that tells me it's good 32 yeah, so it's 32.1 ohms we could say probably about 32 would probably be alright and while we're at it let's you know let, let's figure out what the wattage is so we'll take this and we'll put this on volts I'll put this in my plug over here 123.8. Let's just round it off to 124. And I just happen to have my formulas handy. So what we can do is we know the voltage, which was 124, the resistance was 32. If we have any two, we can solve for that one. So what we'll do is we'll just transpose the equation and we'll make We'll divide by R, and that makes that that. So if we take a calculator, 124 divided by 32, um, it's around 3. Point, well, let's just say 
amps because we, uh, well, I guess it would be 3.9 with significant figures. Okay? So now we can take that, 3.9 times, we know it's 124 volts. So let's zero that out, 3.9 times 124 volts. So it's 483 watts. So it's about a 500 watt dehydrator. So it's going to use a little more uh, juice than that when you turn the fan on, and plus the hotter it gets, the more uh, resistance. So, uh, okay, well, what I'm going to do is take one of those new fuses. I guess we could solder that in there, but the, uh, the original one was just crimped in. So what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to slide that in there, and I'm going to have to cut this to length, so let's see if we can do it. If I cut it too short, I still have some, some extras. Okay. Let's see if we can work that in there. I'm just twisting it in. If, you can, if I can get it in the thing there. So, there's one end. Let's see if we can bend it. These are just regular old needle nose pliers. And we'll try and crimp that. And we'll put a little bite on it this way too. Okay, I just reversed what I did to put it back together. I'm, I haven't put the, the top piece on yet because I want to, you know, verify it works. So. Uh, if you pull up your diagram now, now if you have a, a dehydrator, some of this your wiring might be different. And if you hook it up the way I'm showing you here, you could, you know, cause a fire. So uh, make sure you get a qualified electrician. Make sure you know what you're doing. But the first thing we can do is the easy thing. We remember the black went over here, and that just pushes on like that. And we have we have. The white wire coming out of there was hooked to the blue wire. If I had a blue marker, I would have put blue right there. I didn't. So we'll just put that and twist that on. And we put one of these wire nuts on. And then the one from the cord went to the red. So we'll put that on. Okay, well let's give it the um, the smoke test. Let's uh, let's plug this in. We'll see if it uh, catches on fire. I have a uh, fire extinguisher standing by just in case. So let's uh, let's plug it in. Okay, well the fan came on. That's a good sign. Yeah, I can feel it's putting off some heat. What we can do too. I don't want that to it, it sucks the air off the counter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna see what kind of amperage it's drawing. So we're gonna put this on amps. And this measures the magnetic field generated by how much current goes on there. So let me put it on amps. So I think we had figured what was it, 3.9 amps, something like that. I think it depends on how you hold it. Anyway, that's how you check the amperage. So, if uh, if I was only pulling like 0.5 amps, that would tell me that heater is not working. But you can put your hand up here, and you could you could feel the heat. So we did do a successful repair. So let me put that top cover on, and I think we're uh, I think we're good to go. Okay, one thing uh, you want to definitely make sure you put back on is this little 
thing right here it holds the uh, cord in that way you don't jank it out of there and cause problems so let's put that back on okay and that just fits through there and we can go ahead and put this this wires just tuck up under there and this goes back on like so, it fits on one way. There we go. Alright, let's just put these screws back on. And we will be back in business shortly. Okay, this is some of the jerky I was making uh, when this thing broke down. I, I had to freeze it. The um, I tried it in the oven. It didn't work too good. So, I'm uh, defrosting. I, I got another section of it, so... We'll get this defrosted and we'll see about getting it getting it done. That's right, almost done. And the beauty of what I did here today is I uh, got this fixed and they didn't have any parts left over. So okay, homestead prep out.